So we've had a lot of fun programming uh, Android uh, this semester, and there's a lot of uh, the Android uh, API that is fun to program, especially with the Jetpack and the sort of way they've redesigned the, uh, the API for Kotlin and uh, just for recent usage. Um, today's uh, topic is a, a little bit more, you know, I don't want to call it the seamy underbelly of the, the Android API, but this is, um, shall we say, some programming complications that arise due to memory management and other sorts of resource management issues in, in Android. And so what do I mean? What do I mean by this is you might write code that you think looks perfectly reasonable and should just work. And maybe you even run that code and it does sort of just work, but under some circumstances, like when the phone is low on memory, uh, crashes or it doesn't work in some way. Uh, this can be very unsatisfying uh, for you and for your user base. And so I want to at least um, give you an entree into this world of what happens when you're sort of under low memory, uh, a low memory situation. Android, because phones used to have a lot of a smaller amount of memory, used to be much more aggressive about this. And these problems used to be um, much more prevalent. Uh, they've moved uh, the, the line as we have more hardware resources to try to make it easier for programmers to be productive and uh, less obsessed over whether their activity is gonna disappear. Uh, that said, there are still cases we do need to worry about, and I, I do want you to be uh, aware of the situation. And so a lot of the topics today are, are sort of uh, you know, programming bummers that might come up. Uh, you might get lucky and it might not come up, but either way, you should have the tools to deal with it. So let's, let's take a look. So um, as I'm fond of doing, I'm just going to run uh, the demo uh, to begin with, just to get us started and sort of see what, what we're dealing with. And what we're really dealing with, I have a bunch of, um, a bunch of uh, uh, buttons on top, and then I have a bunch of sort of uh, data displays. And the uh, first, a couple of data displays are about uh, integers that are in my program. And then I have three edit text boxes. And the point of this demo is to show you under what circumstances do, does program state being saved in different parts of your program, how can it go away unexpectedly? Okay, that's sort of, that's sort of the, the point. And then there's a little bit of a grab bag feel to this uh, project. I threw in a little bit of like, this is sort of a funny UI item, but I'm <laughs> sort of proud of it. So threw it in here. Um, and I bookmark these things with images. Anyway, it's, it's not gonna win any awards for design. So uh, let's start clicking <laughs> just because, you know, uh, boring to listen to somebody talk. So what, what is going on here? Well, as I click through this, something is changing state and is indicating this one, two, three. And we'll get into the, the code in a little bit, but basically there is an integer. That integer is stored as a local variable in a fragment. That integer is stored as a local variable in a fragment, but it participates in this callback from the Android runtime about when the Android runtime wants to save my instance state. There is an integer in the view model, just a local variable. There is also an, inst uh, an integer in the view model which participates in a dialogue with the Android runtime about when it wants to save my state. That's called the state handle when we're talking about the view model. It's called the saved instance state when we're talking about fragments or activity activities. Two different terms, kind of the same thing, but the API is a little different. Uh, the um, saved instance state came first. It's a little clunkier to use. View model came second, a little, little bit nicer. So worth the complication. But so these are sort of, you know, uh, sort of a local variable and then uh, a managed local variable, a local variable in the view model, managed local variable in the view model. And then I threw in an edit text box here because uh, there's some there's some interesting properties to edit text in particular. Okay, so um, 
you know what? Let's 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 go back to so and and you know I'm I'm cycling through three uh, through three states. Let's actually take a, a quick look at uh, what these variables look like because I want you to to have a, a sense of that because once we start clicking these other buttons, uh, sort of things are going to happen, and I I want you to be prepared for it. Okay, I always like to start a main activity. In this case, main activity is quite simple. There's not a lot going on here. I mean, you know, I, I use the navigation controller because um, I'm starting to become a believer in the navigation controller. It's, it, it does it does some things for you that are nice, but that that's really about it. And I just I just log whether save this and state ever gets called. And uh, oh, it it actually will it actually will get called. But there's no state in our uh, activity because uh, I wanted to focus this on uh, fragments, and I sort of like this uh, model of a single activity and multiple fragments. And so the state that we're most concerned about is fragment state. Most of the stuff that we deal with uh, with fragments and, and state saving, uh, the exact analogy applies to activities. So a couple of differences here and there in the details, but again, I didn't want to overwhelm you with, with details. Okay, so let's, sorry, let's lo look at uh, this frag, oh no, this is a dummy frag, I don't care about that. We'll get to that, but not yet. Okay, this is the home fragment, which is where you start, and this is where most of the uh, the action is. And so it's got the layout that we saw before, and this is the stuff that I really wanted you to see. So here I've got two variables, both of which are integers. One is called string index, one is called saved instance string index. And uh, you'll also notice that there is a string index key here, which is just a string, and there's this list of strings. So we are going to use string index, and we are going to use saved instance string index. These both have index in the name because they are um, indexing this list, okay? And this is just so that we have something to display in the UI. There's nothing special about this list of strings. This is just totally, how do I indicate to you what the state of this integer is? And I felt like this was the best way to do it. I could have printed the integer and then it would have gone up. And for, for various reasons, I wanted it to sort of go back to one, two, three, because again, it, it keeps the discussion a little bit easier to follow once we get into some of the details. But what's the difference between string index and saved instance string index? Well, let's dig in a little bit. So first of all, as far as the display, there's a bunch of things in the display, but let's just take a look at this now. As you can see, what I'm doing is what I just said. For the string index, I'm taking it, I'm modding it by the size of the strings list, and that's just so that I can keep incrementing this, and it, you know, it's always going to display either one, two, or three. And I do that with all of these uh, variables, some of which reside in the view model. We'll get to that, that later, but for now, let's just take a look at string index and saved instance string index. And in this case, they look similar. They are local variables for my fragment, and I'm using them to display uh, one, two, or three. And just to, to tie that back exactly, so this is string index, and this is saved instance string index. And when I hit this button, you might, you might anticipate what I'm doing, what operation I'm doing to that integer. So let's look at that, let's look at that uh, button. Uh, no, it's not there. Uh, let's look at that button, that one, what do we call it? Call it the plus button. Plus button, set on click listener. Oh my gosh, I am integrate, I am integrating. <laughs> I'm not integrating, I'm incrementing. Yeah, you know, it could have made this a plus plus. I wasn't sure whether Colin had the plus plus operator it does. So all I'm doing is integrate. It's integrate. All I'm doing is incrementing. Sorry, you know, late in the afternoon. Incrementing this integer. That's it. Okay. That makes sense. But there's one other trick. That other trick is this uh function that is provided by the fragment that is uh, saved uh, instant state. And saved instant state, what that does is it passes you a bundle. And this is really the, um, this is the Android runtime telling you, hey, application, I'm running out of memory and I need to kill you. And I know that that might be harmful 
to you and your functionality. Therefore, I'm passing you a bundle. And if there's anything you need to save, uh, put it in this bundle. So this is where we say, hey, uh, I'm going to use uh, you know, a bundle as a, a key value store. I'm going to store this integer, which is saved instance uh, string index. So it's a string index, but saved instance comes from this on saved instance state. I'm going to put this in the bundle. I'll log that. And I will uh, give this bundle to the runtime. What does the runtime do with that? Well, if you ever wondered why, oh, no, it's on, on, view, on view created. On view created, uh, and also, um, you know, in uh, what is it called? In, in activity, it's called on create. On create, there's a saved instance state bundle. That is the same bundle as on saved instance state for the activity. For the fragment, um, on view created, we have saved instance state bundle. It passes it back to us. And we can do something like this. We can say, hey, is the uh, runtime trying to recreate us? If so, it's passing us back this bundle. And then I can recreate the saved instance string index from the bundle. Okay. What do I mean? If you go to the top, when I create, when this fragment gets created, saved instance state is initialized to zero. That's that happens once when this fragment is created. But if the fragment gets destroyed, and and you know the value of this is six, if the fragment gets destroyed because the runtime needs memory. The runtime is going to call me, say, "Hey, I'm about to destroy you." You say, "Hey, cool. This thing is six. I want to save it in this bundle." Fine. Then when I get recreated, it passes it back to me. Hey, this thing, the value is six. Oh, you know, let me take a look in this bundle. Does this bundle have, uh, you know, this this uh, value for this key? It does. It's six. I'm going to I'm going to reinitialize. Okay. Um. Yeah. So let's let's. Uh, the only other thing uh, to note is I, I have I have a fragment. I have another fragment. There's nothing going on in this fragment. All, all this fragment is is just a fragment that is getting pushed on top of the home fragment, and the thing you know that you sort of have to know. We did some uh, manual fragment transactions, and when you have a manual fragment transaction, you can either add a fragment on top of another fragment, which does not uh, remove the first fragment, or you can replace. By default, uh, the navigation replaces. That's good for memory usage because it means there's only one active fragment at a time. And it minimizes if there's anything transparent in your layout, you will see the other uh, fragment behind it. Um, and so it, 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 uh, the navigation framework does a replace. But when you do a replace, there is a, there's a gotcha. So let's, let's take a look at this. So our first gotcha. So we're, we're going to increment this so that everybody believes that two is the correct number. And then we are going to hit this frag button. And just so you see, what does the frag button do? The fragment button has an on-click listener. And all it does is it uses navigation to go to the dummy fragment. Okay. So when we hit the fragment button, we go to the dummy. So um, you know, just consume memory. It's actually, it's it's not. It has nothing to do with how much memory is, it is concerned. It's the fact that it's, it's um, the, the dummy fragment is on the same back stack as our home, and it is replacing the home. Okay, Then we're going to kill this thing. And when we come back, oh, my lord, what has happened? Fragment local now disagrees with these other, uh, for these other two. Why does it disagree? Well, it turns out that when here we go when a fragment has replaced us on the same back stack and is then popped on view created gets called again if in on view created you do something like initialize a local which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do you are going to potentially uh, have a problem okay because on view created is being called again because uh you are um we need to recreate the view of this fragment because it was it was um, 
it was eliminated, it was replaced, and now it's coming back. So this is one case, this is the first case where the state of our uh, local variable might not be what we think it is because of um, sort of what the environment is doing. So in this particular case, I've talked a lot about memory usage. This is not uh, memory use. This is a case where, uh, because it needs to create the view of the fragment again, it is going to uh, execute this. And a lot of times we think of on view created as sort of like a, it only happens once, but it doesn't only happen once. So it's not a good place to initialize variables. Yeah, that's our first gotcha. Now we want to get into this, this memory use thing. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. The, the other thing I wanted to, um, the other thing I wanted to uh, uh, bring up is I keep talking about um, the uh, Android runtime running out of resources and wanting to kill your activity. This is also killing your activity. I'm a user. I just kill that activity. That's not what I'm talking about. We are going to get to when the user force quits your activity. That is something that you you know potentially are interested in sort of figuring out when that happens, but. For the most part, the stuff we're talking about is when the um, the runtime is killing your activity, not when the user is killing your activity. When the user is killing your activity, it's sort of it's a little bit like sort of all bets are off, right? Like, you know, you you're not given a, a chance to sort of save your state, but that's also because the user sort of knows that um, I killed your activity. So when I when I start up again you know, it's, it's as if your activity is sort of running for the first time. So that, that that's sort of an acceptable thing, but it is something to, to keep in mind. Um, we're not talking about the, the user force uh, quitting. And in that in this case, also note that, you know, all of our local state has reinitialized properly. But how do I get the, um, the runtime to sort of be more aggressive about its memory management? Well, the answer is, we go to our settings app, and uh, we initialize uh, developer mode. You know, if you don't know, you can Google and get our developer options. And we go scroll down. There's a lot of interesting developer options. And we'll take a look at it. Do, 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 don't keep activities. So what does it say? Destroy every activity as soon as the user leaves it. And what that means is when we say destroy the activity, that is the runtime grabbing back the resources that that activity is using. Oh, you know what? Before I do, sorry, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you before before and after. So uh, let's run, run our app. Okay, so uh, we're gonna uh, increment so everybody thinks we're at two, and we're gonna put the activity in the background, and we are going to get it back. Now you might think like, are you kidding me? Like, what's the big deal? And here I'll also add, I'll, I'll edit uh, some text in our edit text box. So, oh, that's that's bold. Reasons will you'll find out. It's also bold. Okay, and, and, you know this is arbitrary text, right? It's not not meaningful. Um, but if I go in the background, I come back. Oh my gosh, you know the text is all still there. That's great. Focus, you know, and, and if I, I bring something to foreground, and you know, um, this uh, things things sort of look good, right? Things look like everything is functioning properly. Um, Going into the background, uh, by default, uh, the Android runtime will not grab the resources back from your activity. So we're not sort of testing anything here. Everything is staying in memory. And what we do is when we go in here and say, don't keep activities now, when the user puts the app into the background, the um, runtime is going to take that as a hint and is going to say, oh, uh, I have license to destroy this activity. But now it's the runtime destroying the activity, and it's destroying it in this kind and considerate way of telling us it's going to destroy it and asking us if there's any state we want to save. Let's go back to here. And so now, oh, you can already see. So, you know, uh, in, case, in case you missed it, you know, this, this used, everyone used to say two, and now um, there's disagreement from the local variables from the saved variables. So, if uh, you know, yeah, that's that's not going to change, and no, nothing so far has changed on the edit text boxes. We'll get to that in a second. But if I if I just uh, you know, now that I'm in the state, now that I'm in the state, if I if I kill this and I restart, you see you see it again. So every everybody is uh, everybody has the same state of zero, 
and I increment. And so it's, you know, two, 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 two. And then I go into the background. Um, the runtime at this point is killing my activity. And I come back, yikes. The locals say one, the uh, uh, fragment says two. Okay, so what's going on? So it's exactly what we are talking about before. When, uh, when I go into the background, uh, and actually now, um, uh, uh, the, uh, oh, so, uh, yeah, Let's see in here, um, on view created, um, you know, this, this, uh, activity on save instance state is being called the home fragment on save instance state is being called. So the activity is being killed, but it's being killed in this way such that, uh, on save instance state is being called. In on save instance state, we are saving our saved instance string index. This is the saved instance string index. So it was, I think, one. We put it in there, we get it out, it's still one. Whereas the local variable, which we did not save in on saved instance state, is reinitialized to zero. Sad, as they say. Okay, so you know it's a little, it's a little confusing, sort of what's going on. But you know maybe play around with the demo and sort of think about it. Basically, state that was in your local variables uh, can go away. So that's 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 sort of the takeaway, and that's uh, that's an upsetting takeaway because uh, um, it's kind of hard to write code where your local variables uh, can go away, um, or if they do go away, you want to sort of initialize them to, to be, well, yeah, the, you, you don't want, so, and, and sorry, it's not necessarily the local variables, it's your instance variables. You don't want your instance variables to sort of uh, maintain state, uh, which is unfortunate because that's, that's what local variables do. Now, our instance variables. Now, this instance variable is sort of okay because this is initialized by the framework and it does it in this lazy way. And uh, it's it's not going to be affected by the fact that um, I've potentially died and come back. But if I have any local variables here, I need to actually manually save them. Now, you might say, uh, gosh, uh, memory management, that was done because, uh, you know, there wasn't much um, memory on the phone and these activities didn't last for very long. So we had view models. And view models are supposed to get us out of this problem because a view model is supposed to stay in memory for sort of as long as possible. The problem with that is that the view models are associated with an activity. And so when an activity uh, is destroyed, it's associated with view model is destroyed. And in our particular case, is it? no, I don't say it here, but this activity is the one that creates the fragment. And then the home fragment uh, make sure that the view model is initialized. So this view model is associated with this main activity. When we go into the background here, you'll see this message from the main view model, which is that is being cleared. What does that mean? Um, Unclear. Uncleared is a lifecycle callback from the uh, the main view model, and it and it says basically I'm being destroyed. Being cleared is like my state is being cleared, and by state being cleared, that means all the local variables. And so even though you thought your local variables in your view model were safe, they are not safe if the controlling activity goes away. And in a low memory situation, the controlling activity can go away. So in this case, view model gets cleared and I have the same thing going on here. I've got a string index, uh, which is a local variable, and that's going to get reinitialized. Um, and then I've got, uh, no, not that. Oh, no, yeah. So, so I've got the, the string index that's being reinitialized. Now, in the home fragment, I had this saved instance string index, and that was this local variable, and then uh, in the on view created, I grab the old value out of the bundle, and that works. 
um, to save save the state. Um, the API got a little more sophisticated for view models. So for view models, you might say, well, you know, the part part of the problem with that um, uh, pass back and forth is, you know, you might have a lot of local variables, and you don't know is this local variable supposed to be stored? Is it ephemeral? You know, what's the status? You know, did I like add a local variable and then forget to to store it? You know, save it or store it? So this is a little messy. It's sort of error prone. It's an error prone API. So what we have in, in main view models, instead of having this bundle that we're sort of passing back and forth and using uh, willy nilly uh, to initialize our state, we have this thing called a safe state handle. And a safe state handle operates a lot like a bundle, but basically any state that you want to hang around for this view model uh, just goes in the safe state handle and we actually access it directly out of the, out of the safe state handle. What do I mean by that? I mean, well, let's, let's not do that. It's a little complicated. What I mean is this. So uh, oh, let's, not, let's not look at Crook because it, that's a little, it's not, uh, the, next, the next level of complicated. Yeah, here we go. OK, so yeah, this is, um, so just like in the, um, just like in the uh, home fragment, we had uh, in a string index, which was just a, a local variable. Here we have, in the view model, we have a string index, which is a local variable. Then we also have a string index that we are storing in the saved handle state. So we call state.get and we give it uh, a key. You know, that's our handle index key. And we give it a default value, which is zero. And then we have increment this, this uh, string index. And you can see every time we access this, we, we access it via the state mechanism. So state.get and we have uh, an, uh, a default value. We add one and we set it. Um, right, and th this is this is sort of so. There's no local variable that we are using to cache this. We are actually just keeping it up to date in the state object, which means we don't have to have an uh, uh, a callback, an on instance. Uh, we don't have this. We don't have this callback. We don't save on save on. <laughs> we don't have the on saved instance state callback. We don't need the on save instance state callback in the view model because we're using this st saved state handle interface, getting and setting, but it does mean we, we don't have a sort of nice, simple local variable. We have, we're constantly dealing with uh, this key, okay? And the upshot of this, get back to here, is when we go in the background, we come back, um, whether you are saving state via the unsaved instance state callback, or whether you are saving state via the view model state handle, the effect is the same. Even if Android uh, recoups its resources, your integer is okay because it is being saved and restored for you by the runtime. Okay. So that is that is uh, yeah that is the the point of sort of these four. So in general, you know. Like, let's take a step back. So what's the takeaway? So if you're writing uh, an app, sort of what do you do? The, the main takeaway I want you to, to have from this is uh, try not to use local variables <laughs> to save your state. Um, sorry, instance variables. Local variables are perfectly good, but instance variables are not so good. If you do have to have an instance variable, try to put it in the view model. In, uh, yeah. Um, and, and if you are afraid that your view model might go away, uh, put it in the saved handle in your view model. Saved handle and view model, you're pretty safe. There are some cases where this is actually kind of difficult, and this was an unfortunate thing. Um, I have all this code for taking pictures, and that picture taking code has what I thought was a simple function pointer. And I thought, all right, well, uh, I want to make sure that this function pointer um, once it's assigned, stays assigned. So uh, I figured I would put it in my view model and I figured I'd put it in my saved instance handle. I ended up getting errors because what I thought was a simple function pointer that was coming from the main activity actually has a reference to the main activity. And uh, that's sort of a no-go. You want to keep simple data types in this uh, saved uh, bundle. Things like integers, strings, you know, lists of integers, that sort of thing. 
And once you get into complicated objects like fragments or activities, uh, Android doesn't want to save those for you um, uh, for, for good reason. Um, and unfortunately, when you do callbacks and you do lambdas, it ends up saving a reference to it. So um, you know, there are times when you can't use this persistence mechanism, um, but use it when you can. And beware, and maybe the most important takeaway is, beware if you have weird uh, uh, issues that crop up sometimes on your phone. And if you are having trouble recreating those instances, go into settings, uh, click that don't save activities, and then do this kind of thing that I'm doing here. You, you put it in the background, you come back, and you sort of see what happens, okay? Because that will give you some insight. And then you, you probably do want to undo that settings and uh, that, that um, keep uh, uh, keep activities because it will it will mess you up. Okay, so that's uh, that that that's the sort of high level thing. I now wanted to dive into a couple of more details. Um, in particular, we were looking at integers because they're nice and simple. But let's look at edit text. So um, yeah, you know, if I had I had a, a one in here, I had a two in here, just for that the heck of it, I had a three in here. These go in the background. These come back, and hey, wow, they're all still there. So you might say, gosh, that's weird, because when we did this experiment for integers, basically, it wasn't so nice. It didn't sort of happen that way. And it turns out there's actually special code in Android to save and restore the state of your edit text, which on the one hand, uh, that makes sense. It makes edit text sort of operate rationally. On the other hand, it might confuse you because you might think, I didn't have this problem with edit text. Maybe my uh, activity is not being destroyed. Oh, your activity is being destroyed, but the runtime, in addition to showing your activity, is actually capturing the state of your edit text box and restoring it for you. So I wanted you to make I wanted to make you aware of that. So that's a, a little a little something. Uh, now it, here's uh, here's sort of another thing that's going on in this. Uh, in this application. So uh, I have this quick button uh, that brings up this uh, speech um, uh, in a text box. And the thing, yeah, so if I, so, um, you know, I click this button, uh, I got the speech, and then if I put, oops, I put uh, um, my application into the background and I come back, Oh, the speech is still there. So yeah. So how did I achieve that? Because here I've changed the state of an of a text view, not an edit text, and it looks like uh, it knows what's going on. So let's let's dive in a little bit to what's happening with this quick button. Because um, there's there's I really I could have done it two different ways. One way it loses the state, the other way it, it doesn't lose the state. But it's I'm doing this to give you a little bit of an indication that while for integers, all you have to do is sort of put them in the state object and everything is copacetic. A lot of times the state of your application is not so simple as, as integers. So what, what, what does this uh, quirk, quirk thing look like? Let's go to the home fragment. So let's look at the quirk button. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I've got this, uh, it's a little bit funny. So first of all, uh, this the quirk is just a text view box and uh, the text view box is not in a scroll view. But I'm going to make it scrollable using this this dot movement method, scroll movement method. That's a fun trick that I just wanted to throw in there. And then on the quick button, I set an on-click listener. I am actually this is this is sort of the funny part. Um, I'm doing this thing where I'm setting some state in the view model about the quick button, and then I'm I'm changing uh, uh, the the state of the text view. Let's say I comment that out for the time being. We don't exactly know what it does, but it doesn't doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it does matter, but we can still learn something without knowing. Now, when I, uh, uh, I hit the quirk button, oh my gosh, you know, I got the quirk speech. Then I, I pop into, oops, I pop into the background, pull back, and now the quirk speech is gone. I hit the button, quirk speech comes back, go into the background. Oh, so you know what's going on here? What's going on here is quirk TV is uh, a text view. It's got this property. I am setting this property here. However, when the activity goes away and the fragment goes away, and when it comes back, this text view is not like an edit text box, which has special support in the runtime to save and restore its state. 
its state gets lost. So you have this weird sort of behavior by default where uh, I'm the user, I click this crook box, I'm like reading this, you know, I get a phone call or something, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I'm low on memory and I come back and this text is gone. So that's weird. So what's going on? What's going on is um, the view model is going away in this case. And the, uh, sorry, just the fragment is going away. And so the state of this uh, text view is going away. Okay, so how do we how do we fix it? Well, we need some persistent state in the view model that we are then going to check when we have to recreate our view. And uh, if that persistent state says, hey, the user has already clicked on the on the on the crook uh, button, let's get that, let's get that string and, and reinitialize this text view. So um, in the very simple case of an integer, reinitializing an integer is pretty simple. In the case of reinitializing a text view that is part of your display, you know, the logic is a little bit more complicated. And here it's like what basically the semantics of the button is until you press it, there's no text view. Once you press it, the text view is there forever. So how do we implement that? Once you uh, click the crook button, you set this Boolean. If this Boolean is ever true, it's always true. And if it's true, when we are recreating our state, we make sure that the text view is populated. Okay, so that, that's what we have to do. And then the set crook, you know, if we do a little find usages and go in here, and, uh, go to the definition, you know, uh, we see it's in our save state handle. So is crook reads it for the uh, default, set crook sets it. And that's why it persists uh, because it's in, it's in the safe state handle. Okay. Oh, and now let's take a look at wh wh where does this, where does this text come from? Um, and I just sort of threw this in here. Um, you know, we've uh, occasionally given you apps with uh, some, some state that uh, uh, text files or a database, you, uh, JPEGs, you can put anything in this assets directory and then it is accessible uh, to your code. And how is it accessible? Um, here, um, I actually put the, uh, I put the, I put the text in, uh, put the text into the state. Um, this is a uh, uh, Android view model, so I can get a reference to the application. That gives me a reference to this assets object. An assets object is essentially a reference to that directory. I can open up a file in that directory. I can read the file into a string, and then I strip out the uh, 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 carriage returns and new lines uh, because that way, it uh, no matter what size I put the, the text view, um, the uh, text is properly justified. There's no internal uh, uh, new lines and character returns. Of course, I could have eliminated them in the text file, but you know I wanted to just throw the text file in as is. So what this is doing is this is reading the crook file and it's reading it once when the uh, um, when the uh, um, um, uh, sorry when the view model initializes. Um, yeah, and then this is a little bit of a detail. You know, I, I'm 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 doing things this way in this initializer. I'm I'm calling sort of set that state. If we had sort of a private, you know, val, you know, crook text, and it got, you know, this sort of like, uh, you know, this, this, if we sort of did this sort of thing, this would work in the sense that the crook text would always be, you know, whatever, we have to process a certain way. The crook text would always be correct but I would be reading the file multiple times. So every time I go into the background, I would read the file. Uh, it, when I do it this way and I use the saved instance handle, I'm only reading the file ever once. And then uh, I have the string in memory and I'm passing it back and forth to the runtime. You don't follow that, don't worry about it. It's a, it's a detail. Okay, so that is the crook text. And it is a, a little bit of a sort of tutorial on um, how just this underlying mechanism of how I s save state in the case of the uh, runtime reclaiming resources, how that 
translates into the uh, behavior of my app often requires a little bit more thought than just uh, shove it in the safe state handle. Okay, two more pieces of information, two more pieces of, uh, two more bits of functionality that uh, I wanna talk about. And this, this next one actually has nothing to do with saving state, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of fun. That is this, uh, sorry, I went through that quickly, is this uh, settings button. So the settings button, this, this is what was set to bold, um, controls the, oh, uh, lost the, the text there. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, It doesn't really matter what the what the text is. So um, the this uh, um, preferences is setting whether the text is bold and the size of the text for the uh, bottom two versions, not for the, the top one. And and I want to show you a little bit about why I am demoing this and, and what these text boxes are. So if we go into the Layout. Just get rid of that. Oh, well, you know what? All right. Let's go. So this. Hmm. Somebody's upset about something. Um. So if uh this this edit text is just a regular uh a regular old edit text. There's there's nothing special about it. We don't do anything. We don't interact with it uh, in our program at all. So whatever the default behavior is, that's what that gets. This next edit text, uh, we use the uh, handle. We use the save state handle to try to save the state of it. And basically, that's going to save the state of it um, in, in these cases where the, the runtime is trying to reclaim the resources. The thing is, the runtime is already doing that for the edit text. So we're not going to be able to tell the difference between these two things. And then this one, which is uh, oh yeah, which is the edit text uh, preferences, we're actually going to save the current state of the edit text in this uh, shared preferences object. And that shared preferences object is a uh, persistent um, in between reboots of the application. So that's where we're gonna get this behavior where even if the user force quits our application, we still have the information that's in this shared preferences object. So those are the three levels of edit text. And then the other thing to, to, that's sort of interesting is this uh, settings preferences fragment. So when we get into the preferences, this uh, screen is uh, created by this fragment. And it looks different from normal. There's no sort of layout. So it turns out that um, Android gives you this ability to specify in XML and it gives you a whole language to specify uh, uh, settings. And so it will dynamically create the layout based on this XML. And when you, so this is a checkbox. When you check that box, what it, what what uh, Android is doing is it's using this key to save true or false based on this checkbox. So, you know, it's just it's sort of a it's sort of a funny thing is that um, Android is doing this uh, layout, and when I when I click, and this is now true, and when I go back here, if I look for this pref text bold. Uh, key in a in, in this thing called a, a settings object, I'm going to find that it is now true. Okay, so this is interesting because uh, one, it's a way of getting uh, more functionality into your app with writing less code, and then two, it sort of makes us aware of this uh, shared settings. Share, so it's called shared preferences object, and the shared preferences object uh, maintains its state even across force kills. So. Buy here, hi there. We go. We, so first, we go into the background. Come back. All the edit text state is still there. Go into the background. Kill you. Restart. Oh my gosh! So you, you notice two things. This uh, text is, is still at the same size and the same bold value, and then this text is actually exactly the same. So what's going on with that? 
So let's take a look. Uh, in the home fragment, home fragment um, one thing we are doing is adding these uh, text change listeners. So we've seen these before. Basically, um, whenever I type into the edit handle or edit prefs, so again, I'm not dealing with the sort of raw edit text that's up to the to the uh, runtime. Whenever I um, type into the uh, uh, edit, uh, handle or prefs edit text, I'm actually passing that through to the view model, just letting it know about all those characters as they change. What does the view model do with it? Let's, let's take a look. Yeah, find usages. Da -da -da. What does the view model do with it? For the handle case, it puts it in the handle, puts it in the save state handle, which as we saw, doesn't actually give us any visible uh, change over the default, but you know that's because edit text is special. And then for the prefs, there's this other thing that's going on. So there's this thing called the shared, we have a reference to this shared preferences object. I'll show you how we get that. And it's a, it's a key value store, like, I, like, like a lot of things. Uh, so we are getting a string for a particular value. And of course, we, we, we provide a default, then we even have to provide a default uh, um, because the, the type of this is string, not string question mark. And then here we're modifying the shared preferences object. And a shared preferences object is a, a funny thing. You don't just assign to it directly. You do this thing you call edit. You do whatever edits you're going to do, and it's a bundle. And so you, you put or stores, you know, strings or different different types. And then you do a commit or a apply. And commit um, is synchronous. Apply uh, lets you sort of keep going. I'll, I'll get back to the, the detail in a second. Let's see, where do we get shared preferences from? Shared preferences we got from this thing called a preference manager, that's a global, and get default shared preferences, which is essential, and, and I give it the, the application context. Um, shared preferences is essentially a file in my uh, application's uh, storage space that can't be accessed by other applications. So it's private to me, and it's something that I can store a small amount of data in, something like a couple of K. And you can store simple data types, integers, floats, strings, arrays, booleans. But you know that's about it. I mean, I think ultimately you can put anything that's parcelable in there, but you, you don't want to put complicated objects in there. The point of it is to give you a little bit of persistent storage for your application uh, to keep track of things like you know, the user who has logged in or important secrets that the user has given your application. Um, so it's a little bit of an abuse of the shared preferences uh, object to edit it every time the user types in a key in the edit text box. However, by doing that, we get, we get this nice uh, functionality um, that this string is persistent even if the user kills us, which is a nice um, piece of, of uh, sort of user interface for, for certain things. And so, look, it, this is appropriate for sort of certain 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 things. Your your shared preferences is supposed to be a small amount of data. We are using it for a small amount of data. It is supposed to be used um, sort of not written very frequently data, and we are writing this data. Well, it depends. It's you know maybe the the you know ultimately users are not like machines that don't generate a lot of data, and so it might be appropriate to use uh, shared preferences. Um, the reason here where we call apply is because we are calling this a lot, and commit waits until uh, that um, update has made it to stable storage, and uh, that can introduce hiccups because that can sometimes take a long time. Most of the time it doesn't, but sometimes you're writing it to your SSD and the SSD is like, oh my gosh, I've run out of space. I need to like move some data around and that actually takes you know, a second or something. And you can see that as a, as a performance hiccup. So that's why we're using apply instead of commit. Why, when we write the shared uh, preferences object, do we have this funny um, interface for it? The reason is to give us transactional semantics. What do I mean by that? Um, 
when I uh, when my um, application starts up, I usually am reading some very important data from the shared preferences object. Things like, uh, you know, who is the user? You know, what have they been doing recently? Um, uh, what is their secret? You know, to to log into my service or something. Um, although there's no security in the shared preferences, uh, you know, um, uh, object. Uh, if you if, there, if you have secrets, you should um, should encrypt them. But the, the shared preferences data is very important. And I might want to update two different strings that have to be in sync with each other. One of them is maybe a user name and the other is a user ID. And I don't want to ever have a new username with the old user ID or a new user ID and the old user name or you know, any bad combination of the two of those. And what the transaction interface does is says, if you need to update two different parts of data in your shared preferences, I guarantee you that either you will get the old version, which is, you know, blah, blah, you know, uh, and, and their email address or their, their user ID, or the new one, which is blah, blee, and their, their new user ID, or the old user, yeah, the new user ID. So you're, you're updating two different fields. You either get both of the old versions or both of the new versions. You don't get one old and one new. That's actually quite useful. Sometimes, uh, you know, I've had apps that I've uh, had for a long time and I've updated things. And sometimes, you know, the app can just get into like a bad state. Like you run the app and the app just gets confused and it, it can't initialize or like, you know, the screen doesn't come up. That's sometimes an indication that something like your shared preferences has gotten confused. Um, it's in an inconsistent state. As soon as you try to run the app, it crashes because, you know, um, it has some old key and it's trying to access that key in the database and it doesn't expect that key to not be there and so it crashes. And in that case, you often have to uninstall and reinstall the app. And if you've ever wondered why, why do I have to do that, it's, it might be for some reason like this. So the shared preferences object, we can access it directly, which we do in the code here. And this, oh, not this, this, uh, uh, preferences fragment compatibility layer that we pass this XML to, it actually writes this shared preferences object for us. Okay. And uh, yeah, and, and, and that's it. The only other, oh, the only other things I have this, I have a, a dummy activity and a dummy fragment. We, we saw the, the dummy fragment coming in. I, the only reason I have the dummy activity, I ended up demoing everything here. I ended up demoing everything by, um, by putting it into the background and coming coming back, uh, if we have uh, a, a dummy activity, um, it it clears uh, it clears the view model, and so we end up yeah we end up with this this problem uh, that the local uh, variables have lost their state, but the same variables have not. That's by by running this activity and then killing this activity. It's it's exactly the same when you put it in the background, and you have this uh, don't keep old activities. It's the same thing. So that's all that is. All right, so uh, a long walk through uh, a bunch of mechanisms in Android to save your state, but I wanted to show you these different um, scenarios that can happen. Um, for our class, you can pretty much guarantee, you, know, you can pretty much assume that uh, I'm not going to test your code under low memory situations. That's, that's sort of beyond the scope of the class. But sometimes you run into these problems. Uh, I've certainly run into these problems. I've certainly run into the problem uh, of replacing the fragment and having a fragment that I initialize and on view created uh, turn out to that that's not a good place to initialize uh, local variables and, th and things things went badly for me <laughs> in my application in that case. And so this will help you sort of debug some of that by uh, making you aware. Of, of these effects. All right, so get out there and save some state.